tell the movie reference and win the internet. Welcome everyone. We're in still in Florianópolis in Brazil. Yesterday, was it yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday, we, Michael told his story uh, in light of the troubles that a, a fellow warrior is going through, a young man, 18, living at home and uh, trying to break free. So you told your story, how you got away. The point is, get the <laughs> fuck out. Once you start disrespecting your parents in their house because you feel like you know better mm -hmm. or you can do it better, go! I, I Go, go. Actually, I didn't tell anything about this, but me, I left, well, left uh, at 16 because I saw also it was just coming like this, you know? And so for my protection, for their protection also, I actually went to, because I still had to go to school, I went to a boarding school for the last two years from 16 to 18 so I could be away from home. Was that your choice or they... It was my choice. Put you in it. No, it was my choice. Yeah. And I, I well, love it. Well, they had to pay for it. Yeah, yes. So I was not like... It's not really the same as the... Other. No, that's why, <laughs> that's why I, I didn't tell the story. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> I was cared for in a way, you know? Yes. And, yes. Uh, but I did, I did see the importance of getting away from them, you know? And maybe later returning because it was, it was just... It was not good for anyone, you know? And I had to, I had to leave it. Anyway... You left. My story's better. My mom <laughs> closed the door and said, Don't you ever come back! <laughs> well, maybe you had the privilege of having such a <laughs> powerful woman, you know? Um, so, we, you went, you went, got the car, got the car back, you left. So I got my Firebird, I got my Night Rider, yes. and uh, we told that story, right? And then I, I got in, my dad said, we're going on this right. snowmobile trip with my brothers, to Utah. My, my uncles. He's like, come with us, bring all your stuff just in case. And if you like it, you can stay. So I get off the plane, it's a whole new world. And, uh, you know, I go up and I go to my uncle's house and it's, you know, they're Mormon and they're really, really, really kind of just tradition, traditional religious Mormon and... All the kids are younger than me, and they're they're really good kids. And uh, I'm like, oh man, I don't know, you know, because I'm thinking senior year. I want to have fun. I want to go out. I want to party and date girls, all this stuff. But like, they're Mormon, and they've never had a. I mean, I'm a few years older, at least one year older, maybe I think two years older than. How old are you now? I'm old. At that point. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 17, I was 17, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe I just had my 18th birthday by that point. You're still making your meals? It's December. Still cooking your meals? Cooking my meals. Yes. What do you mean? I'm just going back at you saying, okay, you were provided for that also, it's just a different family. Uh, man, the meals were terrible. We got like a slice of bread and some water. <laughs> No, but the meals were ter terrible. Everyone, the water. everyone in that family will tell you the the cooking was terrible. <laughs> the water in the bread, because otherwise it's too stale and too hard to eat. It. Yeah, well, they were they didn't have much money, and uh, my dad was sending them some money, and uh, that was part of the deal. So like they were, you know, somewhat obligated to take care of me. But I, but you know, they were family. I could tell they cared, and. Um, I was, so I'm, you know, I start senior year of high school out in I'm Bear River, Utah, you know, it's snow, it's mountains and bears and the wild west and I'm excited. And on a Sunday, we go to church, you know, I was not really doing much church back home for the last three years prior since my dad left. But I go to church and then on uh, Monday morning, I go into homeroom, you know, your first class of the day. And it was really strange. Everyone's talking about what happened in church yesterday. I'm like, wow, like they all go to the same church, the same churches, and it's, it's, they're all Mormon, almost all of them. And it was a very different feeling. It was, it was feel, it felt like family. It felt like, you know, back east where I was, there was maybe five Mormons in the entire school. It was a much bigger high school. And I never felt like I belonged. I was always an outsider, didn't have 
didn't really have friends there. And so all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is, you know, kind of cool. Like I wasn't that into the whole, you know, the whole church thing, but, but there were girls there. The, there were pretty girls there for sure. But I was, it was like, it was a feeling of welcome that I wasn't used to. Even the teacher said something about the church the previous day. It's just weird. So then first day of lunch. Now I went, I was like, I was a complete nobody in my high school before back East. I would take lunch on my own. I would, I wouldn't sit at a table or whatever. Like I, like I really <clears throat> didn't have outside of school guys in the area. We would run wild. We all had our dirt bikes and motorcycles and every day. We just, we tore up the place and we had good friends. And then when we went to school, everyone was in their own like click. And I didn't really have a, you know, I was in the, was independent, I guess, but, uh, I was a loner, I was a loser, loner. No, anyway, so independent. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I mean, and I declaimed my independence by choice, yeah, yes. not your choice. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, I really wasn't dating back home. I, you know, I, uh, I, yeah, maybe I'd gone out with a couple girls just very briefly, but so first, at first day of school it's lunchtime and I go I buy lunch at the, the hot lunch tray at the thing and I sit down at an empty table I sit down next thing I know the head cheerleader has come over and she's sitting directly across from me followed by the entire female cheerleading squad and they all want to meet the new kid from the east coast and I'm like whoa <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this was, this was a very, this is my first really clear experience of how quickly you can transform your life, also your identity and how you're known by completely transforming your environment. You know, they say, oh, well, if you go somewhere else to start something new, you're just trying to run from who you are and, and you're going to bring yourself with you and it, it, you're just running or whatever. There can be some truth in that, but there's something really powerful about transforming your environment, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, you know, in no time I had a cool new group of friends and, you know, every, my whole life changed and, but I didn't have wheels and my, my uncle, you know, he gave me this, uh, little, this tiny fluorescent green, uh, truck, like a Subaru or something, just tiny. It was, it was the most, uh, okay, I had wheels, but it, it was not a cool vehicle, you know? And uh, so spring break, you know, spring break's coming up. I'm like, man, I got to fucking go back for my, my ride, you know? And uh, I'd been working, you know, every day after school. I was washing dishes just in some restaurant, which, you know, it's a, it's a low paying job. But I, I felt like, you know, I'm out on my own. I'm living with my uncle and I'm making my own way, you know, and they didn't have money to give me some. So I take my money and I go, I, I don't even remember this part, but I must've flown back across, you know, back East. I would not have even talked to my mom or seen my siblings, uh, because I was probably still at war with my mom on some level. The and car was at your friend's place, no? The car was in my my dad's or some place, I don't know where it was, in some lot or something. And, uh, you know, and I went back, you know, I met my dad and I told my dad, you know, I'm going to drive the car out. And he's like, my God, I really don't think it's a good idea. And he's like, I think he said, I prayed about it. And said, I, don't, I don't think it's a good idea. And um, I was like, well, sorry, dad, but it's, I got to do it. You know, So I take off. In my black Pontiac Firebird, it's senior year, and I got the T-top down, you know, and so the wind blowing in my, you know, my, my long blonde hair, I got my, you know, the radio doesn't work, but I got a boombox, it's the 80s, man, it's 89, it's the beginning of 89, so I got a boombox with a couple of batteries, and I got an audio cassette tape with only two songs on it, and it was, um, um, it was Joan Jett, 
covering an ACDC song, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Dirty Deeds <laughs> Done Dirt Cheap. And, uh, oh, what's the name of that other band? Because of the R, it's not the Rolling Stones, but it's, uh, oh no, Aerosmith, Aerosmith. And, uh, it was a song about coming in the back door. <laughs> but, uh, it, I would listen to those songs, you know, on my boombox, and, and then I'd rewind and play it again. <laughs> and that was my radio for the whole trip. So I get out of Western Maryland, and I'm cruising through it, maybe Ohio, which is the next state over. And I'm just, you know, I'm just flying down the freeway. And, you know, girls pass, you know, passing girls in cars and whatever. And I'm, I'm just a free man. And it, it just hit me. Like, in one of those next states, it's like, who says I have to go to Utah? <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I'm free. I could get a job anywhere. I, I got some money. I've been working. I got my car. You know, it was this amazing feeling of freedom. But I kept on going, you know, I'd pull over on the side of the road to sleep at night. And this was the beginning of, like, I had many experiences of this at this point in time and then through my 20s. But, you know, tap, 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 middle of the night, and it's a cop, you know. He's like, uh, yo, what's going on here? You know, what are you doing? Sleeping, you know, <laughs> harassed by the cops. Anyway, I make it to... Uh, are you allowed to do this in the States? You're allowed, no? Yeah. It's not a illegal or a... Uh, there might be some places where you're not supposed to be sleeping, mm. you know, on the side of the road. But, um, so I make it all the way back, and I think first day, you know, so I come pulling in to school, you know, with my new ride, looking cool, and, uh, I don't know, first or second day, like I go out to check on my car and, and I think it was the first day and there's footprints on my car from the front of the, someone just like walked in their dirty feet all across my car. I didn't know who did it, but you know, I remember smiling. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, someone's jealous. And, uh, meanwhile, with my aunt and my aunt you know she's pretty also pretty dominant female um she was the dominant force in that house and there were two things happen coming towards the end of the school year there one is i started being accused of things i didn't do which was my real complaint at back home in my mom's house that was my biggest beef you know yeah, I caused trouble, but don't blame me for don't blame me for something I didn't do, and then be convinced that I did it when I know I didn't do it. That was the one thing, and the second one. What was the second one? Oh, so I'm walking up the stairs one day, and I can hear like they're talking about my mom. You know, okay, like I got my complaints about my mom. Don't be talking about my mom. And, you know, that that was, yeah. So the two of those together, and I just was like, I'm out of here. And I took off in my car. So this is the beginning of tolerate nothing, right? For me, anyway. And, I, and at this point, like, I, I can. I got my wheels. I don't need to stay and put up with shit, you know? So I take off and I go, the, the last two weeks of high school, I'm living with my grandfather. I've told stories about my grandfather, but he's about, he's over an hour south, maybe an hour and a half south. So now I'm driving an hour and a half into school every day, an hour and a half back. I'm doing time after school every day because for every hour you miss from school, you got to make up with an hour after class. <laughs> you miss one day, you got to like eight school days with an hour after class. Anyway, I'm not going to graduate because... I got too many hours to make up. Somehow they let me pass and then graduation day comes. I show up, I got no family there. I think my, I, I might've had two cousins in the stands, it was outdoor, you know, ceremony, but they, they weren't there for me. <laughs> and uh, let's 
see what I want to tell here. The very next day, I um, I attended my my oldest cousin Travis's wedding, and then I I went straight home. I grabbed a loaf of my my grandma's homemade bread, a jug of water, and uh, I took off in my Firebird. Like I'm going to the beach. <laughs> to the beach from Salt Lake, from uh... from Utah, yeah. Ocean City, Maryland. Clint, if Clint is watching, he knows Ocean City. So like, so you went back east. Yes. It seems like the ocean is closer. The closer to the west. ocean is yeah, California. But the ocean everyone's going to back home is Ocean City in Delaware or Maryland, right there. And um, so it's like beach or bust, and I got like barely enough money for gas to to make it. How long know? does that take? It takes. It took me, in this particular case, eight days, and I'll tell you why. So I take off, I cross into Wyoming, and I get a, I get a flat tire. And I go, I, I pull into a, it's like a Saturday morning or, I don't know, something, Sunday. Anyway, I pull into a service station, and they, you know, they say, okay, go, you know, go in or whatever. I come out and they say, you know, you know, sir, looks like you got more problems than that. Look, your spring, that it's like your uh, suspension is, is it's up where it's not supposed to be. And I just use my logical brain, like they, a spring is like it's got this kind of action, you know. But it was like they had moved it from from being lower down to like somewhere higher up, and I was like, that's impossible. These motherfuckers fucking put it there. And they're trying to charge me extra. So I was like, dude, put the thing. And I said, man, put it back where it goes. <laughs> and they did. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I look back on myself as a teenager. And I think like naive, Mormon kid, shy, whatever. But I kind of look, I, but like now I'm, I'm a bit older and I'm looking back and I was like, you know, I had some amount of balls, you know, I wasn't just totally, uh, cause I, cause I remember for the longest time into my twenties and, and so on, I, I, I just want to move so far away from the kid that I was to be in something totally, you know, powerful and different, but all right. Anyway, I blow money there on a tire and now like money's running short. I got money for like one more tank of gas and I fill it up and I go. And I start having problems like with the, uh, the same problems my mom had had in the car that led to it going off to that shop for a few years. It's electrical problems. So it's, it's, it's just stopping on me in the middle of the highway. And I got to pull over. I got I dealt with the cops for eight straight days. They're constantly pulling over. Yeah. What seems to be the problem here? <laughs> you know? And, uh, and long story short, I had no way to, I, had, I ran out of money halfway home. And so I was stealing gas and food to get home to the beach. I'm not proud of it, but, um, so like I'd, I'd, I'd roll into a gas station and I would, uh, you know, put the thing in the tank and I would pump the gas. I'd worked at a gas station before, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd worked several jobs. So I knew how it worked. I, I knew that as soon as I hang up the pump, it's going to start beeping and they'll look out the window to see who it is that needs to come and pay. So I go into the store, you know, put some things in my jacket or whatever to eat because I don't got no food. And then um, walk out and like, you know, maybe I'm going to go back and hang up the pump and then come back in and pay. But I'll just put the pump on the ground or I put it back on the thing, but like not in a way that's going to make the thing beep and just kind of like, make sure they're not looking, <laughs> just pull off and just <laughs> get the hell out of there. And uh, yeah, I went straight to the beach, man, the beach was, that was amazing. Was, yeah, I was also, 
Yeah. Kind of exploring the limits of where's, where are the moral, ethical boundaries as far as making money and surviving. Um, the end of the summer comes and my dad's like, you know, Mike, cause I got accepted into two, I only applied to two universities when I was in high school and it was probably my dad's at my dad's bidding. And they were both in Utah, University of Utah and BYU, both good, both good schools. And um, my dad's like, you know, Mike, I'm going out to Utah because he's moving to Utah and he's driving a, a, a truck out there. He's like, I'm going, do you want to come? And uh, I remember that, that last day I was working in a liquor store and kind of like had no place to sleep and stuff like this. And there was a hot girl at the liquor store who was working there, blonde, well endowed. And she's like, you can, you know, you can go home and crash in my bed because I was getting off before her. You know, she's like, when I come home, I'll kick you out. But of course she has to say that, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but it was that day I took off and I went, uh, and I left, I think I left my Firebird at the beach. I think my Firebird had completely just broken down. And I just left it to die there in Ocean City. And I, uh, I don't remember how I got back, but my dad and I got in the U-Haul. And I remember I bought a Led Zeppelin uh, CD, listened to that, you know, um, all the way out to uh, university. But, yeah, the point of the story we were talking about yesterday was if you're, if you're 18, if you're starting to really butt heads with your parents, Clint says, senior week, yes. Did you go to OC, uh, Clint? Clint is from Maryland there. So uh, he, knows, he knows about OC. So, yeah, I helped my dad drive his U-Haul out there, and then uh, I, I, I went to the dorms in University of Utah. Oh, man, it was great. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I could tell some more stories about standing up for yourself and tolerating nothing and all that, but. Yesterday, we, you know, we just wanted to share some of this because we got a young 18-year-old guy back in uh, California who's at home and he's, he's disrespecting his dad and almost going to get in fights with his dad. And we're like, look, man, go claim your freedom. You know, take that anger you got. Take not wanting to compromise. And uh, don't blame your dad. It's his house. He's paying for shit. He makes the rules. Don't disrespect your dad. If you want to claim your power and tolerate nothing, go, right? Like he could tolerate nothing and, and get into a fight with his dad, but, you know, it's more powerful to just go make your way on your own. Jump and figure it out on the way down. Yes. Yes. Story time over? Yes. Maybe Clint you can, says you could tell part three tomorrow. Clint says he ended up homeless and on the beach for a month. Yeah, that's more or less uh, more or less my story. Maybe it's his story because he says, "Did you go out there?" He that's says, yeah. That's says, yes, and then he says, "Ended up homeless on the beach for a month." That's what I was assuming it was. I was saying that was more or less mine also. Clint, I uh, I got a job working at the um, they have like a an amusement park right there on the beach. So I got two jobs when I got there. And, uh, you know, what I noticed was like the cool kids were like, they were the locals, you know, they weren't tourists. So they were walking fast on the boardwalk, the cool kids, cause they were like living there, you know? So I moved in with this, this group of guys and I got, a, I got two jobs and I got to walk fast, you know, down the boardwalk. <laughs> And the job I got at the uh, amusement park was working in one of those booths where you, you people compete for a prize and give them like a stuffed animal. 
So I can still remember. My job was basically like you'd see a couple walking by, a guy and a girl, you know, and he's got maybe a little stuffed animal for her. You know, my job was to give him shit. Be like, hey, come over here and win your girlfriend a real prize. <laughs> it's just funny to think back about it because I think about myself at the time as being this shy kid, you know, but I was like, I was doing that. I was totally taking the piss, you know, and, uh, Man, I was kind of, I was just a little scam artist at the time. And I, you know, uh, they're paying me minimum wage. And I was, you know, I was hustling, hustling like half the cash for myself. And then at the, uh, at the bar, at the, no, not the bar, the uh, liquor store where I worked. Man, um, I hope God, you know, forgives me for this, but I would go in the, the freezer or the cooler and I would, you know, I would take some liquor bottles or whatever, and I would manage to put them in the trash with the cardboard boxes. I'd take out the trash, put it in the dumpster. After my shift, I would come back. I'd pick up my bag of uh, alcohol, bring it home, and, you know, for everyone to party with. But, uh, yeah, man. Good times. <laughs> Good times. Ocean City. Leave home. Start your life of <laughs> Clint says, I worked at that park for two days. Really? What uh, What were you doing? What were you doing at that park? Oh, man. You know, I didn't have any real good friends at the beach either. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Good old days. <laughs> More stories soon. <laughs>